Hi everyone and welcome to Quilt Stories. Today I'm honoured to be speaking to Peter Byrne who has won a major award uh, fairly recently and he's going to tell us all about it. Peter, welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh pleasure. Would you like to tell us a little bit um, about where you are and how long you've been quilting and then we'll jump into talking about your quilts. And sure, yeah. So I'm joining you from Toronto, Canada this evening. I'm, I'm at my apartment. I live right downtown Toronto. I was a hairstylist for 30 years and in 2009 I retired from that. I had an aunt that I used to visit twice a year and she was an avid quilter and I was always so taken by her quilts. So when I retired I bought a small sewing machine and just started sewing and eventually all of my friends and all of my family ended up um, with the quilt that I made for them not really knowing a lot about quilting but enjoying the process of quilting. Then in 2017 I joined the Toronto Modern Quilt Guild and when I walked into that first meeting I actually had never quilted a quilt. It was at that time that I became really a full-time student of this craft and ever since then have been um, studying and practicing and taking all kinds of courses and really developed my skills mm -hmm. and then in 2019 I decided to take my quilting in a new direction making quilts specifically to go into jury shows and I started a quilt called Starring You and Starring You took me about four months to complete I put in over 250 hours of quilting stitches alone. That quilt won Best in Show at QuiltCon 2020. I'm going to switch over now to sharing the screen so everybody can see this amazing quilt. Starring You was a study for me with using just two colors, black and white. Wanted to do a black and white quilt for quite some time, but when I decided to go into the direction of doing quilts for uh, to go specifically into shows, I read all of the different categories that you could put a quilt into in QuiltCon, and the one that really taught my, caught my attention was the use of negative space. So when I designed Starring You, there's a, a center star. For me, the most fun part and the most creative part and the most exciting part was designing everything that was gonna go around that star. The star portion is made up of large diamond shapes and originally there was eight large diamond shapes but I took three of those large diamonds and cut them into 90 pieces. So what you're looking at here in this frame is one of those small pieces and every piece I took white fabric and did a border all the way around. So when I was placing all the starbursts together I was able to use applique because applique gives you the most freedom of design in composition so you're able to really play and move those pieces around. I used turned edge applique to put the partial star in place in the center. From there I placed all of the 90 pieces black and white. I would arrange them, take a picture on my camera, sit back and relax and, and look at the photo that I took and then go back to my design wall again and reposition and eventually they all found the home that they needed to find. Here's a detail of one. Within the starburst itself, I used a variegated thread that went from black to gray to white. I found the white thread on the black fabric and the black thread on the white fabric really added a lot of dimension to the starburst. Uh, this is a real close up here. So you can see that every piece is uh, turned edge applique. Um, you can also see at the bottom here, there's a, a tiny little bit of, of a fuzzy part. And I was experimenting with adding some like raw edge to the finished edge. With every piece, I also glued on the back some little tiny pieces of frayed fabric. And again, that was just adding one more layer of texture to the starburst. The applique was machine applique on? So what I did was I had my quilt sandwich made. So I took all of these pieces and I used my quilting machine in free motion with ruler 
And with my ruler, I was able to sew around the edges very carefully mm -hmm. and get the stitches nice and close to the, the turned edge. And with my ruler, I was able to uh, create those really great straight lines as well. And what machine are you using? I have two machines that I use. So it's a uh, sit-down mid-arm. It has a 16-inch throat. I use that for all of my free motion quilting with rulers as well. Um, and then I have a domestic sewing machine that's a little bit larger as well. And it has an 11-inch throat. And I use that machine for my walking foot quilting. All of these straight lines in the starburst were done with the walking foot. I've been using Janome for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, bought the best sewing machines that I could buy. The very large um, Janome, uh, it's called SD16. So it's a sit down with a 16 inch throat. My um, other Janome is the Janome Horizon. And I really love them. Just a bit more detail because you don't, you don't see these until you get close to the quilt. And I know that people, um, when they go to the show, they would see it as a whole cloth and then go closer and, and see all these amazing little little shapes. So I think that's very Yeah, it, exactly. So where, the, um, where are you looking at these pieces now? They, they would have been part of the original star by taking those large three diamond panels and cutting them up gave me ample amount of fabric to bring into the starburst itself. Mm -hmm. And because those pieces were foundation paper piece, it also allowed me to create these really beautiful, sharp, spiky looking pieces that the change of, um, change of color in the thread makes quite a, a difference when you, when you see the close up here. We've got a little bit of the quilting here now. All of the quilting was done with white thread. So I started doing my quilting within the star itself. And then from there, I started working around the star. I like to work with my quilt and see what direction that quilt is going in, allow the quilt to kind of take me in the direction that it wants to go. So I don't start off with a drawing of every detail or every motif um, all drawn out. I do the opposite of that. I, I like to just have this blank canvas in front of me. And as I figure out one section that I want to quilt, like for example, you can see a small star coming out of the corner of the larger star. Mm -hmm. So once I decided that motif was gonna be in that spot, I did that all the way around the quilt. And then when I came back and decided the next motif, I would fill that section in and again, go all the way around the quilt and fill that section in. Eventually, it was all filled in. And then the last thing that I did was the heavy black sew lines. That was to define all of the different motifs that were done and sort of highlight them and bring some attention to them. I used a 12 weight or fill thread in combination with my walking foot and a stretch stitch. And that way I was able to lay down three layers of thread all at the same time and create that really heavy black line. Doing black thread on a white quilt is very, very difficult to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit crazy to actually even try it. But it was, the, it was the last part of finishing the quilt and it really did make all of the difference. It was difficult, but one day I, I got so frustrated with my sewing machine not wanting to do what I wanted it to do that I took my quilt and I rolled it up in a ball and I threw it in the back of my closet and it just stayed there for a week. And then I went and got it back out and I started, started quilting it again. <laughs> but um, <laughs> doing, doing these black lines on white fabric, I think that was a one-time deal and I don't think I would ever do it again. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. But, um, certainly, yeah. um, having doing that stretch stitch, I think, is really effective. I think that's a great way. I'm just sort of looking at it closely, and um, it works really well, doesn't it? It really picks it out. So, so, when my quilt was hanging at QuiltCon, just talked to everyone that wanted to chat with me about my quilts. I think the number one question was, "How did you do those black lines on your quilt?" A few people told me that the stitch I used is also referred to as a bean stitch, B-E-A-N, bean. Okay, right. 
and if you if you look really really closely at the stitches they actually do like, look like a, a whole bunch of little tiny beans that are all lined up right beside each other here we are okay and that one best of show at quiltcon quiltcon is the largest modern show in the world and this year they had 1700 quilts from 15 different countries and out of the 1700 quilts they chose 400 that were juried and put into the show and out of those 400 quilts i got first with star and you for best uh, in show and i actually got second as well for my other quilt which will be coming up in a few minutes yep and that one's called cityscape and I won Best Machine Quilting Frameless for this quilt. So for those that are not familiar, um, frameless means it was not done on a long arm. It is 78 inches wide and 88 inches long. Making quilts for jury shows, I, I think having a larger quilt has more of an impact when people see it as well. Most people, when they look at my quilts, they kind of assume that my quilting is done on a long arm. Um, but it's not. It's done on the sit-down mid-arm. Yeah, so my original inspiration for this quilt was a beautiful view of the cityscape in Toronto. So I made a king-size quilt that had a lot of dark blue on one side, a lot of different colored blue strips in the middle, and gray on one side. Mm -hmm. And when I hung that up on my design wall, I immediately saw a quilt without gray in it, so the gray was edited out and this large piece of fabric that I had, I cut down to two and a half inch strips and a few five inch strips as well. That was my fabric to go ahead and start piecing together Cityscape. The approach to quilting that I used on Cityscape is something that I call overlay quilting. The first quilting that I did on this quilt was all of the, lar the, the very bright, large orange plus signs. So I had four pieces of fusible applique, and then from there I did match stick quilting, moving over basically just like one stitch at a time. I did all of those orange plus signs on the entire quilt, and then moved on to the second step, which was, you can see a nice bright teal blue uh, thread here. I allowed myself to take that color thread and sew right on top of the orange quilting that I had done previous. And then I moved on to the, the yellow boxes, which are done sort of in the same way with the fusible um, applique. You can see the grid work here in teal blue is sewn right on top of the orange quilting. In the dark blue section of the quilt, I also did some uh, ruler work with round rulers and sort of created like a, a bubble effect going from the bottom of the quilt all the way up to the top of the quilt. There's also some boxes here that are done with the matchstick quilting in a light blue as well. As I finished one quilting motif and I moved on to the next, the one that I had finished became the backdrop for the next quilting motif that I was adding. It's really interesting layering effects. I love layering. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. And, and this is the, the grid work that was done in a, a few different panels over the quilt. Um, I thought it was really effective using the bright teal on top of the really dark, dark blue fabric. The color of the thread choice was really important for this quilt. And you mentioned Aurifil threads before, um, one of my yes. favorites. Um, any other brands that you use? Are you? I'm, I'm pretty loyal to Aurifil. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, mo most, most of my thread that I have is Aurifil. Here we have um, the quilt in progress with a little... We, yeah, so you can, uh, you can see my, my large sewing machine. I have um, lots of extra tables. So when I'm quilting, I like to create a U-shape around me. So I have support for my quilt in all directions, and that just eliminates drag. I'm interested here because I have a mid-arm machine. And okay. I sew from the front, and you're sewing from the side as if it was a sewing machine. Exactly. So that, that's the way that this one was designed. So instead of like, you know, facing it like you're facing yours, mm -hmm. it's in the same orientation as a regular sewing machine. Okay. Well, so this was Best Machine Quilting Frameless. Excellent. Congratulations on those awards. That must have you. been an amazing thrill for you. Incredible. So I... I 
had entered, this was the first time that I entered quilts into a show. Yeah, so this whole process was all new for me. So as every step went by, it became more exciting. And I received two emails saying that two of my quilts, I was going to be winning awards for them. I wasn't really sure if I was going to be going down to Austin, Texas. And I got a phone call from the event coordinator from QuiltCon, Elizabeth Jackson, and she was saying, are you available to come to the award ceremony? And I'm like, well, I've been trying to decide if I want to come down or if I, I would like to be there in person to get the awards. And she said to me, we at QuiltCon would, would like to invite you as our VIP guest, really need you to be there for the award ceremony. I couldn't believe I was having this conversation on the, so I said to Elizabeth, am I winning best in show? And she said, I'm really sorry, I can't tell you what awards that you're going to win, but when, you, when you're at the award ceremony, you're gonna be very, very, very happy that you're there. So I was very happy. Okay. Um, I had a seat reserved in the front row, and the two categories that my quilts were in came and went, and I didn't win anything. And of course, the longer you wait, the bigger the prizes are. So we were literally down to like the last awards. And so Cityscape was brought up on the screen and there was my, my quilt and I was brought up on stage and congratulated. And, and the MC started to talk about the best in show quilt. And as soon as she started describing it, I knew it was my quilt. And so I popped right back up and went back up on stage and was congratulated again and, and received a second envelope, and, which was pretty awesome. Starring You was the first quilt that I made to intentionally go into a juried show. And QuiltCon was the first juried show that I went into. It was um, a phenomenal experience and su such a surprise. Uh, yes, I can't imagine the joy. <laughs> I don't think it's something that I will experience in my quilting lifetime and I, I can see how much joy it's given you. Um, we yes. just going to quickly uh, go to another quilt of yours because uh, you have yeah. a technique that we're going to talk about quickly. Yeah, so, so this quilt is called Appeal. There's a, a technique of applique that I developed and it's called hover quilting. So hover quilting is a form of raw edge applique and it's done with no fusible web. When you finish your quilt and you put it through the washer and dryer, you end up getting this beautiful frayed edge, which is a really beautiful texture on a quilt. So yep. you can see in this picture that there's an um, orange peel shape. I love this photo. Yes. <laughs> we, we're all, as quilters, we love seeing color. So I think that's why we like looking at this photo. It's just so bright and beautiful and, great. and full of color. Yeah. And there, there you were sort of laying, laying them out. Yeah. So those were the first pieces that I made for this quilt. So they were just on my cutting board and I thought, I think I should take a picture of those. They look, they look quite beautiful. So yeah. the way that I make a hover quilt is there's a backing, there's a batting, and then there's a quilt front. So there's three layers. I put those together. I make my quilt sandwich. And then I take that quilt and I hang it up on my design wall. And then from there, I take every piece that's going to go on that quilt and I pin them in place until the design is finished. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I glue baste everything into place. And then I take it to my large sit down quilting machine and I quilt everything into place. And once I've got all of the quilting done, then of course that's followed with the binding and then in the washer and dryer to get that beautiful frayed edge that the hover quilting technique provides. Great. When I got back from QuiltCon, there was a lot of interest in my workshops and everything was sort of lining up beautifully for the balance of this year and next year. And then um, COVID showed up and it just literally wiped everything off of my, my, my working schedule. So what I did was I took my two most popular workshops one is called my hover quilting workshop, and the other one is the cityscape workshop. And I took both of those workshops and I reinvented them and turned them into a virtual experience. So I started teaching those workshops last month online, mm -hmm. and wow, it was a, a really fun experience. So I'm just gonna step back, and this is the mini inspiration quilt that people make when they're making the hover quilting workshop and 
this is the mini that people make when they're taking this cityscape workshop. Right, and it you has can see all, all the techniques. All of the different techniques that are done on the large quilt are, is done mm -hmm. on the small quilt as well. Uh, and they are, are they alive virtual or are they recorded or? Yeah, so what it is, is I do my workshops on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I decided to design my classes where somebody can go on Instagram, which is like super easy. So for example, my cityscape workshop, it's 50 short videos on Instagram. And I allow those videos to stay up online for 48 hours. So a person can come to the class that day and work through the day and work through the workshop and then have all of that information um, the next day as well, so they can continue on and finish their um, mini inspiration quilt. It's a very interesting technique. It's um, yes. not one I've heard of before. And um, yeah, that sounds yeah, really interesting. Uh, the feedback has been fantastic and it's worked really well. I think thank I'm you, sure so. a lot of people will be interested. I want to thank you so much for going into so much detail about your beautiful quilts. Um, they're really amazing. My pleasure. And Thank you. I wish you all the best for next year's Quilt Con. I'm sure you're working on something for that now as well. I um, am actually, yes. yes. I look forward to seeing it. And thanks, Peter. It was so great joining you today. And thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed chatting with you. My pleasure. Bye for now. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.